Hello, and welcome to today's workshop. What's the quality of your current social well being interactions? For those of you that may not know me, my name is Crystal, and I am a health and well being consultant here at Forest Low Insurance. We assist you with your workplace benefits, and specifically in well being, we like to focus on day to day lifestyle behaviors and preventive measures, including social well-being. As a disclaimer, today's workshop is for educational and engagement purposes only. If you have specific concerns or questions, please reach out to your HR team for your company's specific social well-being opportunities and benefits. So let's dive in. As we all know, maintaining a healthy level of social well-being benefits our overall health and well-being as well as all of the relationships around us. Social well-being is the sharing, developing, and sustaining meaningful, meaningful connections with others. Benefits include being comfortable where you are in social situations. Um, it's including uh, increased self-esteem, the ability to create healthy boundaries, as well as helping build emotional resilience. When we don't care, take care of our social well-being, Oftentimes it shows up in the form of social isolation, which leads to loneliness, difficult forming, uh, maintaining relationships, feeling disconnected, and increased levels of stress, anxiety, and depression, which can also lead to physical ailments as well. So maybe you have stomach problems or uh, maybe you get headaches or migraines. A sense of belonging is really crucial for uh, us as human beings to function and correlate specifically with the feelings of loneliness if we don't feel that we belong. So rather than reviewing all the facts and statistics, uh, you can look them up on Google. They're all over. Um, we really like to provide this moment to actively practice, engage, and experience what it feels like when you take care of your personal social well-being. In this workshop, we're going to increase our awareness of our current social well-being interactions, as well as um, practice building simple yet effective healthy behaviors with balancing both our social as well as our personal time, as well as setting those boundaries and increasing that self-esteem. So I invite you to maybe take a moment, collect any materials you'd like for today's workshop, to be most effective, I encourage utilizing the power of pen to paper. However, if you don't have those available, you're welcome to use an electronic version as well. Maybe grab your water or anything else that you may need. Maybe you're on lunch and taking this during your lunch break. Uh, grab your snack, anything that you might need. I'd also like to invite you to remove any distractions. So maybe close out your email. Maybe if you have a chat or instant messenger, I invite you to silence your phone, maybe turn it face down. I promise that all of these will be there when we are finished. In this short half hour, it is very important to take that first step in becoming fully present and intentional, utilizing this time you've already set aside to invest in your personal well being. As we all know, you can't gain more time, so to use it wisely. And as you do so, and I will um, do the same, I wanted to just mention um, to kind of start us off a short practice uh, that it is said you're a reflection of the people you spend the most time with. So as you collect your materials, I invite you to bring to mind maybe who those top three to five people are for you. So hopefully you have everything you need. Feel free to take as much time as you need. But let's get started. So let's start by taking a few minutes to bring awareness to our current social well-being. I've listed a few categories to consider. So you can see on the screen, I have family, friends. If you have a partner, maybe coworkers, your community, yourself your environment, as well as any activities that you may, may do. So on your paper, you're welcome to draw a circle and create the social well-being wheel, just like you see on the screen. And don't worry, it doesn't have to be perfect. You're the only one looking at it. 
Um, so I'll give you a moment to do so and I will join you. Just kind of making a, a pie, if you will. And you're welcome to label them so. All right, so feel free to take as long as you need. Um, and when you're ready, we'll dive into the practice. So I encourage you to take a look at each category and rate the quality of each. So let's say one to five, one being poor quality and five being excellent quality. For example, say I rate my current family quality as maybe a three. Then I'll color in half of the triangle or half of the piece of pie or pizza or whatever your heart desires. And then let's say I rate my friend's quality as maybe a one. So uh, my quality is maybe almost non-existent. Uh, and I'll color in just the small space closest to the middle. So of course you're welcome to color it in or you're welcome to just write the numbers. Um, and so uh, to get us started, I wanted to share something um, uh, about the quality. So we're focusing on the quality of our relationships. So when we think about quality, bring to mind how you feel after leaving an interaction. So do you feel drained and depleted or do you feel energized and lighter, maybe inspired? And I also, I heard something the other day that said, scrolling has become so normal. The average person checks their phone an average of 96 times a day, which uh, adds up to 10 minutes and then 45 days a year. It talked about what you miss out on when, when you're scrolling or doing something else while trying to spend time with others. Communication is so much more than just words. You can hear someone speaking, but are you seeing them speak? Or maybe is your head down on your phone or watching TV? or doing something else. You miss out on all of those emotional cues, the tone, the facial expressions, the body language, all of these things that tell us how the people we love are feeling or the people that we're around are doing. Really paying attention and being genuinely present and available to those around us. Over time, this has a huge impact on the quality of our relationships. And maybe you've noticed it already um, with kind of what the world looks like in today's space. It then requires that we relearn how to communicate with others, how to create conversation, how to ask questions. And maybe you've also been on the other side. So maybe someone has been on their phone or doing something else while you're trying to talk to them. So I'll give you a few moments of silence to go through each category and rate kind of what your quality looks like in today's moment.
I also encourage you as you're going through to just trust your gut instinct and um, put the first number that maybe comes to mind. Um, and this changes all the time. So um, you don't have to dive too, too deep into this practice just yet. Um, and then to be mindful of time, I'm going to move forward to the next step. However, feel free to continue categorizing as long as you need. Um, this will also be recorded, so you're also welcome to come back to this space at any point in time. Next, we are going to reflect on the social well-being circle. So you may have something that ends up looking kind of like the uh, social well-being wheel that you see on your screen now. So I invite you to just, at a quick glance, I invite you to take a moment to just notice without judgment what stands out to you. You're also welcome to write your answers on um, maybe another page. Maybe you just star what stands out to you. And then is there a space that maybe you'd like to increase the quality? Is there a space that you'd like to maybe decrease some interactions with? Maybe they're not serving you. Maybe something else came up during the practice. Do you notice anything else? I find that it's helpful to pause and maybe step back to see what your picture looks like especially if you're starting to notice things like loneliness or difficulty maintaining relationships or wanting to be socially interactive. Um, sometimes it's nice to kind of just take a look at our picture. You may see that our quantity or our time spent is different than our quality. So we wanted to talk about, you know, being comfortable in social situations, increasing our self-esteem, uh, healthy beha uh, uh, behaviors and boundaries, and then building emotional resilience. So I wanted to share just a few tips. Um, these are my very personal human experience tips. So um, feel free to take what serves you and leave the rest. Um, and maybe if you have uh, tips that work for you, feel free to maybe jot them down. Um, so put your phone down. That's the first step is uh, being present. Uh, not sure how to hold a conversation. Ask questions. Not sure what to ask. What do they do for work? What do they do for fun? Do they have a family, maybe a pet? And then listen, actively listen without trying to respond. Maybe increase your self-esteem by asking these questions of yourself first. What are you really proud of? What are you really passionate about? What comes so easy to talk about? Maybe you feel awkward making conversation. Ask them to do something with you instead, like maybe go for a walk or to an event or maybe cook a meal together. Pay attention to your nonverbal cues. What does your face look like? What does your body language look like? What's your tone? Do you find yourself maybe drained after a social setting or with specific people? That's normal. We don't get along with everybody um, and that's okay. What's a boundary you can make next time? Maybe that's simply limiting time spent with them or tell them there's a specific topic you'd rather not talk about. If they keep bringing it up, maybe you use uh, the gray rock method of barely engaging and using single word answers. You become boring. It's also okay to not attend everything. Maybe you have plans on your couch with a new book and that's okay. For example, and I just like to bring um, personal experience, and I hope that this is relatable. Um, so for me, 
Uh, Thanksgiving is coming right up, right? And uh, I think it's next week already. Um, but I personally really don't like traveling to multiple houses and eating multiple times and all of the things. I love my family, but I really don't like rushing around on a one day. Um, I know that I feel overwhelmed. I feel grumpy every time I do this. So I personally am establishing traditions of staying home and making my own meal. And maybe, uh, you know, I text or FaceTime or make time for them on a different day or weekend. But I'm not saying it's easy. It's actually really hard. And I feel like I'm hurting everyone's feelings. But this is important at this point in life for me as well as for my family. Um, and that's okay. It may adjust, it may change over time, but at this point, that's something that I know I need um, to take care of myself and my own well-being. Do you take any time for yourself? When was the last time you really heard yourself and your thoughts rather than maybe being on autopilot or helping everyone else around you? It can be really hard to do, but it's the most important voice to listen to, especially when you want to build your self-esteem and truly knowing who you are. Emotional resilience. So the ability to not carry everything for everyone. Um, so a few pieces of advice that I tend to go back to that are helpful for me uh, regarding emotional resilience is that I am the only one who actively lives my life and I know what's best for me, even if there are opinions of others. Um, you don't have to fix things that you didn't break and you don't have to attend everything that you're invited to or every um, opinion or um, argument. And I, I bring up some of these harder things because sometimes that's um, what I personally uh, you know, hold on to sometimes, which brings me to the last one that if it's not mine to carry, then to put it down. So for example, um, I'll just use my Thanksgiving example, right? I feel like I'm hurting all of the, the mom's feelings who are cooking, you know, these big meals and want to have all of their kids around the table. And, and I love that and value that and all of the things, but I also know that it's a lot and it's exhausting to run to 10 houses on one single day, not just for me, but for my partner, for my kids. And so I want to enjoy the holiday um, for what it is that I'm grateful for those around me, for my home, for my space. And I'd like to take a day to just pause, to just relax instead of adding so many more things to do. Plus, um, food is always great and they're great cooks and I would feel bad not eating what they made and worked so hard for. And then I end up feeling really exhausted and tired and full and bloated and I just don't feel great. And so I don't want to put myself in that position. Um, so I will try to find another way to connect with them or, um, you know, say happy Thanksgiving and what I'm grateful for, but in a different format than what is, uh, I would say, traditionally approved. So I hope you found some of them helpful, um, and hopefully some of these things help you as well. And so we've increased our awareness of our current quality of social well-being. We reflected on what we've noticed. And so I'm a big fan of utilizing the information. So we want to give you this experience and this opportunity to take care of yourself. So you can look up all the facts of why it's important to take care of your social well-being uh, and or reach out to me. I'm happy to share lots of information and articles with you. Um, but what did you notice when you looked at your own personal uh, social well-being wheel? You know, what came up? And what do we want to do with that information? And this will change over time always um, because we are human and we are constantly changing and, and evolving. Um, but what are we going to do with this? So moving forward, is there a direction that you want to maybe move towards? You know, something that stood out. Maybe take a look at your wheel again. See what, see what it looks like. Maybe that's increasing a space. 
because the quality is great and you always feel, you know, more alive after interacting. Or maybe it's decreasing because you feel really depleted and exhausted after. And then think of one thing that you can do to take that one step forward towards that direction today. Just one, maybe do that today, maybe this week, um, but something to actively move towards that space. And maybe that's just saying, okay, let me just pay attention to what I feel like, you know, after this next interaction or, or you know, whatever the case may be. So I'm going to join now. I invite you to maybe write it down. Pen to paper is your most powerful tool. And then I encourage you to write it down if you haven't already. And then lastly, I invite you to pause and take a moment just to notice how you feel after today's workshop uh, compared to maybe how you felt before we started. I want to take this moment to thank you for joining us today to actively take care of your social well-being. We hope that you found today's session to be engaging and impactful. And I encourage you to take a moment as we leave to go right now and maybe schedule or take that simple action towards your personal and social well-being. If you want to come back to this recording, or share with a coworker or a loved one, feel free to check out our YouTube channel. We also have lots of other workshops and webinars that are readily available, but thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed today's session. Have a great day.